Hi there, Jason Moser, analyst with Motley Fool One. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Ask a Fool. Uh, today we're taking a question from Twitter, and at Metis Lighthouse asks, what's the best financial gift to give a one-year-old now and annually going forward? And I love this question. Thanks for asking it. It's actually one that you know it means a lot to me as I have young children myself. So there are a number of different ways to look at this, and I'm going to give you a few different ideas that you can think about and, and figure out which one makes more sense to you. So first, one thing you can do is to open up a custodial savings account and make annual deposits or deposits on a schedule that you see fit. It's a relatively simple process, and it's easy to maintain, and pretty much any bank can do it. Now another idea is a little bit more involved, but it could certainly be more rewarding over the longer term, would be to open a custodial brokerage account with the intention of investing in an index fund. And I would recommend an index fund over individual stocks, simply because an index fund is going to be a, a sort of instant diversification there. But it's something like the Vanguard 500 index fund is a low cost way to gain diversified exposure to the U.S. equity market. And actually this fund invests in 500 of the largest U.S. companies, which span many different industries and account for about three-fourths of the U.S. stock market's value. And again, like I said, this is instant diversification, and it takes care of the advantage of the long of long-term compounding effects of the stock market. So that's number two. Finally, a third option, you could actually consider a gift that goes to something specific, like a 529 college savings plan. Now, this is a plan operated by a state or an educational institution with tax advantages and, potential, and potentially other incentives to make it easier for saving uh, for college. Now, the main advantages are that earnings are not subject to federal tax, and generally they aren't subject to state tax either with certain caveats. You can set one up and name anyone as a beneficiary, a relative, a friend, even yourself if you wanted. Uh, you can find more answers to all of these 529 questions, though, if you go to irs.gov and just type 529 in the search bar above. But really, I think this is a great question, just a few different ways to look at it. I hope this has been helpful. I do appreciate you asking the question. And for more information, make sure to check out fool.com.